Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Airline Exam Prep or AEP. This video is part two in a series of video sessions where we try to solve the Air India exam paper for typewritten A320 first officers. So in this video, we will not only solve the exam question paper, we shall try looking at the FCOM sections and finally we shall try practicing these failures in the actual aircraft A320 simulator. All right, so let's get started. The question which recently came up in the R&D examination was, when is alpha lock inhibited? When is alpha lock inhibited? So there are four options. Option A, in flight when the aircraft speed is greater than 160 knots. Option B, in flight when the aircraft speed is less than 60 knots. Option C, on ground when the aircraft speed is less than 60 knots. And option D, in flight when the aircraft speed is less than 160 knots. As always, I want you to go ahead, pause the video, try and solve this question on your own, okay? And then we shall try and solve this question. So go ahead, pause the video. Okay then, so let's try and solve this question. When is alpha lock inhibited? Now, what does alpha lock mean? What does alpha mean? What does lock mean? Let's discuss that right now. So alpha refers to the angle of attack of the aircraft, all right? So anytime we have a high angle of attack scenario, alpha lock activates. So what does the lock word mean in the alpha lock feature? Lock refers to the locking of the slats in its current position. The locking of the slats, right? So when we have a high angle of attack, the slats lock in its current position and do not retract. Why does it not retract? Well, in a high angle of attack scenario, and if we are in a low speed like we are in currently, the aircraft can go into a stall scenario. So to prevent that, Airbus has released a feature called alpha lock where the aircraft automatically prevents the slats from retracting even if you as the pilot puts the flap lever to zero. So let's try and uh, practice this in the actual aircraft. All right, so I want you to have a look at the pitch. When I uh, pitch up the aircraft, have, keep observing the pitch, all right? When we reach a very high angle of pitch, let's say 30 degrees, I shall try retracting the flaps to zero. So let's have a look and please observe this scenario and this situation. So first, let's disconnect the autopilot, all right? And let's try pitching up the aircraft. So, as you can see, we're steadily increasing pitch. As we approach 30 degrees of pitch, I put the flaps to zero, and there we go. Let's pause the simulator for a second. As you can see, alpha lock has activated, right? You get a bar over here which says A lock, which wasn't there before. This basically means that the slats are locked in this current position and will not retract, even though I have put the flaps lever to zero. That's why you get a blue zero here, right? Further, as you can observe, the, uh, the angle of attack is a very high angle of attack currently. So this refers to alpha lock, all right? So let's try and solve the question. When is alpha lock inhibited? So bear in mind, the alpha lock feature is to prevent the aircraft from stalling in flight, right? It's, it's, it is designed to prevent the aircraft from stalling in flight. So that automatically eliminates option A, in flight, option B, in flight, option D, in flight, right? Because you want the feature in flight. So the only option remaining is C, on ground. So on ground, when the aircraft speed is less than 60 knots, the alpha lock is inhibited. That is, the service or the feature or the protection is not available to us. So let's look at the FCOM now and see what they say. So if you go to the flight controls chapter in the Airbus FCOM, you will notice this section called the alpha or speed lock function for slats. All right. So this function inhibits slat retraction at high angles of attack and low speeds. When the flap lever is set to zero, the slats alpha or speed lock function activates and inhibits slat retraction. Right? So we are high, high angle of attack, low air speed, and we've set the flap lever to zero, and yet slats uh, retraction has been inhibited by alpha lock. Right? What are the two conditions? One, the angle of attack has to be above 8.5 degrees. So as you can see here, we are above 8.5 degrees. Right? The second condition is the speed is less than 148 knots. Now, in this situation, we are not less than 148 knots, but since we, we match or we fulfill the first condition of a high angle of attack, alpha lock has activated. Finally, the last significant piece of information is when the aircraft is on the ground and its speed is less than 60 knots, then the function will not activate. So when you're on the ground and speed is less than 60 knots, I mean, the aircraft knows there's no way you can stall the aircraft when you're on the runway, right? So that's why this feature is inhibited and not available, right? So the answer for this question is C on ground when the aircraft speed is less than 60 knots. So in continuation to the alpha lock feature, I would also like to talk about the automatic retraction system. 
which is available in the Airbus 320. Now, what is the automatic retraction system? The automatic retraction system is basically a feature where even if the pilot forgets to retract the flaps in a high speed scenario, right, the flaps will automatically retract, all right? Remember, the slats will not retract, okay? It's a high lift device, so the Airbus does not want to automatically retract slats, but the flaps will retract. Now, in what scenario will it automatically retract? Let's say if you are the pilot tomorrow of the Airbus 320, and for some reason you get distracted, you forget to retract the flaps, and your airspeed goes beyond 210 knots, all right? 210 knots. You will notice that the flaps automatically retract to prevent damage to the flap system, all right? This is called the automatic retraction system. So let's try and practice this in the actual aircraft, all right? So what I'm going to do now, if you look at the, the PFD, you will notice we are at 4,500 feet. We're maintaining around 195 knots. So what, and uh, we are currently at flaps one plus F, correct? So I'm gonna select the speed to 210 knots. As soon as the speed increases to 210 knots, you will notice that the flaps will automatically retract to zero, but the slats remain in position. So this is called the automatic retraction system. Let's try it out now. So I'm selecting speed to two, let's say 215 knots, all right? So you can see the airspeed shooting past 210 knots. And there we go, I've set 215 knots, all right? So let's see, you see the thrust is pulling up now, right? And the aircraft is steadily increasing now. So keep a watch on this position, okay? As soon as we cross 210 knots, okay? We are approaching 210 knots. So as we touch 210 knots, you will notice, as you can see, automatically the flaps start retracting, right? And you see, this is called the automatic retraction system to prevent damage to the flap system. So let's also now look at what the FCOM says for this system. So if you look at the FCOM, the FCOM talks about the automatic retraction system where it says, again, in the flight controls chapter, it says, when in config one plus F, the flaps retract to zero automatically at 210 knots before the airspeed reaches VFE, right? And there's one more scenario. It says when in config one, the flaps extend to 10 degrees automatically at 100 knots. So if you're in a very low scenario, the flaps will extend. And if you're in a very, very uh, high speed scenario as well, the flaps will retract, all right? So this is another safety feature of the Airbus 320. Bear in mind, this is not the alpha lock feature. The alpha lock is a completely separate system, which only activates in a high angle of attack scenario, all right? So I hope this clears up the flight control section of the slats and flaps for you. Now, let's try and solve one more question which came in the R&D examination related to flight controls. Which computer controls elevators when both ELAC-2 and Blue hydraulic system has failed? Which computer controls elevators when both ELAC-2 and Blue hydraulic system has failed? Well, the options are A, FAC-1 and FAC-2. Option B, ELAC-1. Option C, SEC-1. Option D, SEC-2. So these are four computers which are available to you. And if the ELAC-2 and Blue hydraulic system has failed, which of these computers are now responsible for controlling the elevators? So go ahead, pause the video and try solving the question. Okay then. So let me try and give you the answer to this question. Now, to give you the answer, let's first look at the, the architecture of the flight controls, right? So if you look at this picture over here, which is available in the FCOM flight controls section under architecture, you will notice that these are the flight control surfaces. Now, these are your wings, right? These are your elevators, this is your rudder, and the different systems which control these flight control surfaces, right? So if you look at the green box over here, that refers to your elevator, your left elevator, your right elevator right? And if you look at this red box over here, that refers to the flight control computers. So these computers control the elevator with the help of the hydraulic system, right? So in this scenario, if you look at this diagram over here, we're referring to the question refers to the left elevator. So in this scenario, in a normal situation, ELAC-2 controls the left elevator. ELAC-2 controls the left elevator. Now imagine the flight computer as a brain, all right? Just like how the human body has a brain, the aircraft also has a brain, and this is the brains, all right? But the brain can only work if it has a muscle, right? You also need the muscle along with the brain power for, for any system to work perfectly, just like the human body, right? So along with ELAC-2, the brain, you need the green hydraulic system, which is the muscle, to work in tandem for the left elevator to function, right? So in a normal situation, ELAC-2 works with the green hydraulic system to move the left elevator. All right, now what happens if ELAC-2 fails, right? And I believe that's the question. Yes, when ELAC-2 fails, what happens? 
right? So when ELAC2 fails, obviously, as for the diagram, ELAC1 starts working, and ELAC1 is now responsible for the left elevator function. So ELAC1, remember, has its own muscle group, right? This is the brain, this is the muscle. So ELAC1 is connected to the blue hydraulics, right? So the second ELAC2 fails, all right? ELAC1 takes over and uses the blue hydraulics to make the left elevator function properly. All right. After the ELAC1 fails, let's say what happens if both ELAC2 and ELAC1 fails. All right. It switches to the SEC2 system. All right. Again, the SEC2 is linked to the green hydraulics. All right. So SEC2 uses the green hydraulics to move the left elevator. And let's say you're having a really, really bad day and you lose even the SEC2. So finally, the SEC1 takes over. Right. The SEC1 uses again the blue hydraulics to move the left elevator. So it's a very simple diagram. This is the brain, this is the muscle. Just follow the vertical direction and you'll be able to connect the computer to the brain. So as you can see, now let's look at the question and try to solve it. So the question is, when both ELAC2 and blue hydraulic system has failed, which computer controls elevators? So if we lose ELAC2, right? Obviously ELAC1 is now controlling the left elevator, but they've given us another parameter. Not just ELAC2 failed, but your blue hydraulic also failed, remember. Just like the human body, you need both brain and muscle to function, right? So ELAC2 has failed. So now ELAC1 is operational. But for ELAC1 to work, you need the blue hydraulics. And the blue hydraulics has also failed. So now the aircraft has no choice. It will automatically switch to SEC2 system, right? So the SEC2 controlled by the green hydraulics is the computer which controls the left elevator. Because both SEC2 and green hydraulics are operational, the left elevator also works, right? So... The answer to this question is, very obviously, option delta, sec 2, option D, sec 2.